Right now, Colorado Governor Jared Polis is holding a news conference expected, expected to give more details on the coronavirus in Colorado and the vaccine rollout plan. Let's listen in. I have lost and I want to express my condolences to the families and friends, 4,107 uh, Coloradans to COVID-19. Uh, each one a uh, friend, a uh, son or daughter, brother, sister, mother, father. And I want to, um, I, I've had the opportunity to express my personal condolences to people that I know who have lost family. And uh, as you know, I've, I've lost uh, net, uh, friends to this. Uh, I think every Colorado has suffered some loss and our hearts go, go out to those who have. Um, today, we're joined by Dr. Rachel Herlihy, our state's lead epidemiologist, who will give you the latest updates, where we are, uh, the prevalence of COVID in our state, the trends, uh, how the holidays may be affecting transmission rates. Uh, let me turn it over to Dr. Herlihy so you have the very latest and up-to-date information about where we're at. And then later on, I want to get into how people age 70 and up can very easily online sign up to get the vaccine. Dr. Herlihy? Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. Next slide, please. So as the governor mentioned, we, we are starting to see um, the impact of the holidays show up in our data. Um, there are some early signs that we are seeing a small increase so far following Christmas. It is still too soon for us to see any potential impact of New Year's Eve. We really won't start to see that in our data probably until sometime next week. But this figure is showing you specifically what our seven day moving average looks like in the red line. And you can see if you look at the last week or so it's worth of data, you can see that we have seen a slight increase in the number of cases that are occurring in the state. Next slide. And at the same time, we continue to see a high level of disease prevalence in the state. So at this time, we estimate that one in 105 Coloradans are actively contagious with COVID-19. Um, that has come down from our, our peak in late November, but still we continue to see a large percentage of Colorado's population um, actively infected with COVID-19 and having the potential to transmit um, infection to each other. So contacts between individuals continue to be high risk in the state. Next slide. At this point, we um, have seen, thankfully, a, a steady decrease in our hospitalizations. So that does appear to have leveled out a little bit over the last couple of days. So specifically in this figure, you're showing we're showing you the number of Coloradans that have been hospitalized. You can see that clear downward trend really starting in late November. If you look at the far right of this figure, though, the last couple of days, you can see a little bit of a, a slowing in that decrease in hospitalizations. But at this point, we're not seeing an impact um, of the holiday increase in transmission on our healthcare system. So we're not yet seeing a clear trend of increasing hospitalizations, um, but perhaps a little bit of a plateau in the last couple of days. Next slide. I want to spend just a minute talking about some modeling work that we are, are looking at right now in collaboration with our School of Public Health modeling team to try and help us understand the potential impact that vaccine, um, as well as continued social distancing measures, mask wearing, might have on the pandemic in the next couple of months. And so this figure is specifically showing you on the left the impact that we see of vaccine rolling out across the state and the decreased number of hospitalizations that we anticipate seeing um, after vaccine is distributed in the state over the next couple of months. And so what you can see with the, the red dotted line, the area between the curve on the left and the curve on the right is showing you what we anticipate the impact of vaccine could be in a couple of different scenarios, different levels of um, disease transmission or transmission control. So you can see in the solid line, 60% transmission control, there's also 70% transmission control, and then our current trajectory of 82% transmission control. But overall, you see, we do see a decrease in the number of hospitalizations as we start to roll out this vaccine. However, if you look at the figure on the right, the figure on the right is showing you the impact on hospitalizations due to continued strategies to maintain transmission control, including the impact of social distancing and mask wearing. And what this shows you is that we really continue to see a much greater impact from all of those strategies, um, at least until the early summer, late spring, um, as far as the number of hospitalizations we can prevent. So overall, key message here 
is that social distancing, mask wearing really continue to be more important um, and have a greater impact on individual hospitalizations than vaccine does. It's really going to be several months before we see a clear impact of the vaccine or less clear of an impact um, from the vaccine on our number of hospitalizations in the state. With that, I'll hand it back to the governor. Thank you, uh, Dr. Herlihy, for, for the update. I appreciate that. Um, uh, you know, this goes to show that uh, while we're at over 2% 2 2 in Coloradans have received the vaccine, and, and we're grateful, especially for those who are the most vulnerable for, for the protection that it'll offer after the second vaccine, and, and only the very first Coloradans that got that vaccine are finally getting the second vaccine. Remember, that's 21 to 28 days later. For now, uh, we need to focus on wearing masks, avoiding social interactions with others, and staying six feet away. Earlier this week, we provided more information for Colorado 70 and up about how and where to get the vaccine. Um, I know a lot of folks say, where do I sign up? And I'm going to go through exactly where you can sign up to get it right now. Uh, Colorado and 70 and up uh, are part of phase 1B of our vaccination distribution plan. And in most places of our state, that has begun. Not, not everywhere. They, they were still working through hospital and medical personnel in a few places. But by and large, in most areas and, uh, and those that haven't should be in the next few days, there, we are beginning to uh, be working through uh, everybody age 70 and up. And there's an important reason for that. People age 70 and up represent more than three quarters of COVID deaths in our state. 78% of COVID deaths, de deaths are people age 70 and up, just under half of total hospitalizations. So the biggest impact on saving lives, on uh, ensuring we have adequate hospital capacity, is to make sure that the very first Coloradans that we can protect are those who are at the greatest risk from the virus age 70 and up. This chart shows how we uh, will reach our wildly important goal. My administration has, we implement in each area, what we call them WIGs, wildly important goals. And uh, they're public facing. Uh, we want the people to hold us accountable for them. Uh, obviously a big variable here is we need the reliable supply from the federal government of the vaccine. But um, as long as we can ensure that, and I'll, I'll give you a few, few updates on that as well. Uh, this shows how we're going to reach that goal of 70% of Coloradans 70 and up vaccinated by the end of February. Um, and uh, we are partnered with hospitals, community partners, and local public health authorities, uh, federally qualified centers. Those are community health clinics. Uh, there's some on the retail pharmacy side that includes CVS and Walgreens at the nursing homes through a federal contract. Many of the hospitals in our state right now are doing outreach to 70 and up Coloradans right now. So if you get a phone call or an email from a hospital that you've had any contact with and that you're in their database, maybe you had a hip surgery four years ago, uh, maybe you were in their emergency room two years ago, uh, they are contacting all of the folks that they know are 70 and up. So if you get a link, make sure it's from the hospital, you know, <clears throat> we don't want any scams here, make sure it's really from Kaiser or UC Health, you know, regular customer information, but they are contacting you and phone calls as well because they don't have everybody's email. So your hospital may be calling you. Now, there are some people 70 and up who have been lucky with their health. They haven't been to a hospital. They might not be on one of those lists. That's good for them. But the question might be, how do you sign up? And so here's how you sign up with UC Health. There's a website right there. Uh, Denver Health. Uh, they're currently making appointments with their patients 70 and up. Um, they also have a website um, and they're inviting everybody who's 70 and up who had contact with uh, with Denver Health uh, to do that. Centura Health, uh, Centura Hospitals across the state. Uh, they're, again, they're inviting people through the My Centura Health patient portal. And starting next week, they'll, they'll be uh, vaccinating about 9,000 people age 70 and up a day. Uh, and they expect that capacity to be 20,000 a day by the end of February. At 16 community vaccination sites, they expect to have 20 in just two weeks. Uh, at existing physician clinics, urgent care clinics, and that includes in Canyon City, in Colorado Springs, in Denver, in Durango, and in Pueblo. Banner Health, um, depending on where you live, Banner Health has sign-up forms. They're doing a little differently. They're doing one for each of their locations. So if you live in Summit or Larimer or Morgan or Logan, uh, you you, um, you go to the particular site they have, 
Uh, you take a survey just to make sure you're eligible, 70 and up, and then you can schedule an appointment online. Kaiser uh, Permanente uh, for Kaiser members that are 70 and up. Uh, and uh, you can simply visit this website to complete the COVID-19 vaccine sign-up. And when you complete your information, you'll be put on the list at Kaiser for the vaccine. Vail Health in Eagle County, to make an appointment and see their clinic schedule, you can sign up right online there. Uh, Boulder Community Health is contacting patients 70 and up that they have in their database uh, through their portal. If you already have a Boulder Community Health uh, account, you should go online and check that your personal information is up to date and see if they've tried to contact you. You can also set up account even if you're not a current patient to make sure you can get on their list if you live in Boulder County. Uh, very simple to do that. Um, if you're 70 and up, no, no reason to do it yet if you're not 70 and up, or unless you're a first responder and didn't get it through your, your work. Uh, if you're eligible group, there are a few others besides if you're police or firefighter, 70 and up, you can, you can do that. Uh, SCL Health, Western Colorado, they're contacting all of their patients age 70 and up uh, that they know about. And um, if you're 70 and up and, and you're not on, on their list because you haven't had any interaction with them, you can, you can sign up to do that. Or, or give them a phone call. Um, and then Salud, I wanna, I showed you the chart that included details about vaccine distribution. And we talked about community health centers. Well, I'm so proud of Salud. They vaccinated 830 people on Wednesday, 950 people yesterday alone. By next week, they're expecting to be doing a thousand uh, people a day. And remember our community health clinics largely serve people who don't have insurance or underinsured. Um, uh, and they're, they're really doing a great job in getting the vaccine out. And next week, they're going to be hosting a vaccination clinic in Aurora. Salute focuses on low income and medically underserved populations. And you don't have to be an established patient to get vaccine at, at one of their, their clinics. So I want to say a great thank you to all the staff and medical providers at Salute and their community health center partners for really getting this up and going quickly to uh, get the protection levels that we need for our seniors. Now, Let's just do a little math because I, I hear from people. I tried to sign up and I haven't heard anything. And and we are rapidly inoculating people 70 and up every day. But we are only receiving at this point 70,000 vaccines a week from the federal government. Uh, so when we extrapolate those numbers, it means everybody 70 and up who wants it should be able to get it by the end of February but it means that you might not get that appointment for this week or even next week. Um, please sign up. You will have the opportunity to get the vaccine by February 28th. Seniors are being protected every single day, but there is not enough vaccine that we are getting from the federal government to do this all in one or two weeks. So uh, there will be some folks who can't get an appointment for three weeks or four weeks or might not hear back for a week. Uh, but there will also be folks who've already gotten it and, and we'll be getting it this week. And our, uh, we are every vaccine dose we get in the state, we are getting out immediately uh, and focusing on those that have the biggest health impact and saving lives. Just a couple updates on that supply. There's a couple areas of potential upside on supply. All of our modeling, you know, we're talking about uh, 70 percent of 70 and up by end of February. That's based on our current understanding of supply, about 70,000 vaccines a week between Moderna and Pfizer. A couple opportunities for upside there. One is approval of a new drug that would get a new vaccine that would give us new supply. Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca are the top two candidates. It's been publicly reported that Johnson & Johnson might be approved and come online sometime in the next month. Uh, that, would, that would speed up our capacity of getting people 70 and up inoculated if that uh, works for, for people in that age range. Uh, we also, um, there's been discussion of whether splitting the Moderna dose uh, can be effective and using a smaller dosage, especially for people 22 to 55, that would increase the Moderna dosage. And finally, there's been discussion uh, earlier this morning at Broke that the Biden administration plans on releasing all the vaccine or most of it that the federal government has to the states, presumably in late January, early February. This is this will be a very interesting, um, uh, it's a good concept. I think it's the right thing to do. But currently, the federal government pairs the vaccines for the states, meaning they hold back the second dose of Pfizer and Moderna. The wonderful thing about Johnson & Johnson is it only needs one dose. We'll see how effective, but we're looking forward to that data and the approval. But for Pfizer and Moderna, they hold back the second dose, and it's provided 21 or 28 days later, depending on the vaccine, to the state. 
if the states are forwarded all of the vaccine, we can then increase the number of people getting their first vaccine. But the trade-off is we don't have that guaranteed supply when they come due for their second vaccine. So that means that some people might not be able to get their second vaccine exactly at 21 or 28 days, could be a month, month and a half. Uh, it's believed to be effective with a slightly different interval, but it, we also know that after the first shot, you're not by any means fully protected. Uh, there's likely some protection. Um, there's been some limited data that shows it might be in the 60% range, but it's not the 95% solid protection after the booster shot. So anyway, it'll open up new possibilities. There's some, some opportunities that we might exist to go faster with more vaccine, but we are not counting on those today. Today, with what we know and what we expect, uh, we, we hope to inoculate 70% of people 70 and up by the end of February. And of course, there's downside risk as well. There are weeks where we get less um, uh, of the vaccine, and particularly the Pfizer vaccine numbers have been a little bit more erratic than the Moderna vaccines. Uh, and we are subject to, uh, to what we receive, and we're hopeful that we will receive more vaccines sooner to be able to do that. Before we close, I want to remind everybody we're in the midst of the global pandemic. Uh, one in uh, 104 Coloradans are currently contagious with coronavirus. Uh, just today, the CDC indicated that asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic spread occurs more than, than, than was even thought. Um, modeling had showed it in the 40% range, asymptomatic, pre-symptomatic spread. Pre-symptomatic means the person ultimately develops symptoms but is contagious for a day or for two before. Asymptomatic are people that might have extremely mild or not noticeable symptoms but are still contagious. Now, now identified by um, more than 60%. Um, of, of, the, of the spread. And to put things in perspective, yesterday, sadly, was the deadliest day of the from coronavirus. The, the toll is now 364,000 nationally. One in 104 people in Colorado, think of how many people you encounter at the grocery store, um, at, you know, where, where, wherever it may be, <clears throat> you're very likely to come into uh, contact with one or two people who are contagious, some of them without knowing it each week. And that's why interaction with that person may be contagious and may not know it. A mask, wear a mask, keep six feet of distance, uh, and avoid socializing with people outside of your home to reduce those risks. Uh, don't, you know, now's not the time to hold gatherings with your extended family and friends and others have parties. We're, we're getting there soon. The vaccination is rapidly being, being deployed. And I do believe there's upside that we're not including in our base model to get there faster. If we get AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, split Moderna, more doses up front, a lot of potential upside to get there sooner. But to put things in perspective, just over 2% of Coloradans have been vaccinated and most of them have only had one dose and are awaiting the second dose and the full protection in the coming weeks. 60% don't or haven't yet helped us. So that's why we wear masks, even when we feel perfectly fine. You don't want to be somebody who gets it from somebody who is asymptomatic. You also don't want to be somebody that causes the death of another human being simply because you weren't wearing a mask. It's the right thing to do. Let's step up. We've overcome a lot of hurdles in the last 10 months. So let's make sure we complete this marathon and save lives and avoid unnecessary loss of life. Thank you. And I'm happy to take some questions. Hi, this is Jessica with The Post. Um, yesterday, the state confirmed um, more cases of the new variant. And uh, with the state lab doing most of that testing for the variant, is the state really getting a good look at how widespread it is here, particularly because I th think last time it, I asked the state is only testing mostly for um, long term care facilities and correctional facilities. Yeah, I'll, I'll let me go to Dr. Hurley, but I can confirm it's not the dominant variant in the state. Um, I can. I want to give Dr. Hurley the opportunity to talk about sort of how we look at its prevalence. Dr. Hurley. Great, thank you, and thanks for the question. So we are rapidly expanding our surveillance in the state for not just the B117 variant, but all variants. So our lab is now receiving specimens from a network 
network of hospitals across the state. And those are going to include both inpatient, um, so hospitalized patients, and also, also clinic patients. Their specimens are going to be routinely sent um, to the state laboratory so that the state laboratory can really see um, a wide sample of, of specimens that are being collected and try and identify if there are pockets of this variant potentially across the state. But at this point, um, as the governor said, we believe that we're not seeing widespread transmission of the variant right now in Colorado. Next question. Hi, Governor. Thanks uh, for taking our questions. John Daly, Colorado Public Radio. Um, Early on, the state was releasing uh, specific vaccine numbers, uh, including uh, distribution and where that was going in the, the first uh, weeks of December. Um, since then, um, that data has not been released, unlike other states. If not, why not? And, and will we start uh, getting more specific data about where the vaccines are being uh, distributed to? Uh, yeah, so we, we just updated the vaccine dashboard uh, a couple days ago. There should be more information on there. We rapidly want to make more information public. Um, because this is being built as, a, as we go, uh, we have to automate the reporting so that we can uh, make sure that information that uh, is available is, is accurate. Uh, right now, a lot of it is, is manual and incomplete, uh, but we because we don't want to delay getting it out, uh, we are, as we go, building the car and transparency and accountability are a key piece of that. And so absolutely, uh, that that information will be available. It's more of the, the IT implementation and the automation of it that's being built in real time. And, and that'll be rolled out progressively uh, in the coming days and weeks. Hi, Governor Jason Grenauer, Denver 7. You mentioned vaccination clinics was just wondering if you could expand on that, how many, where they're going to be, how those are going to work, how we make sure we don't have long lines of cars. And yeah. are these vaccination clinics for those seniors who don't know technology or have patient portals and have raised those questions to us? So, yes, generally, yes. So um, if you have a contact and have been a patient at UC Health or your Kaiser or, um, you know, a Centura, uh, you will likely go through your patient portal, sign up get the vaccine. But there's a lot of seniors that might not have insurance, uh, might not uh, be citizens, might not have a hospital they have been to, might not have interacted. So that, and, or, or, or might be unable to get physically to a hospital or community health clinic. And that's why, for instance, in Center Colorado and San Luis Colorado, we had successful clinics. It's why Salud has had several clinics in fields. Uh, it's really to reach people where they are who aren't necessarily uh, part of the, of the normal hospital healthcare system. Center and making sure that everybody 70 and up receives the vaccine. Uh, and especially many of our communities that have a harder time accessing healthcare are more likely to have 70 year olds living in multi-generational households, which can also put them at greater risk from the virus if they have three or four or five working adults in that household who might work uh, in and around others. But in reaching everybody, uh, it's important that we go beyond adjust our, our regular hospital system and making sure that people 70 and up can be protected. Hello, Governor. Jesus Carrasquel from Noticias Univision Colorado. Governor, in español, apenas tenemos una semana de, de que se relajaron las restricciones. Los casos de COVID-19 aumentaron rápidamente en un 30%. ¿Tiene pensado restablecer nuevamente las medidas estrictas? Es importante decir que este es, es falso. Los casos de COVID no aumentaron por el cambio de restricciones, ya que muchos de esos cambios fueron efectivos esta semana y los result resultados no podemos ver por una semana más. El aumento ahorita es debido a las fechas feriadas, Navidad, uh, Día del Año Nuevo. Es muy temprano todavía para ver el impacto de este crecimiento, pero estamos optimistas de que los casos uh, uh, van, no van a cambiar mucho. Esto es otro recordatorio de que las personas tienen que usar tapabocas siempre, no tener reunir, reunir, reuniones con personas que, que no viven en su mismo techo, mantener distancia social y lavarse las manos. Una persona 
en cada 104 personas ahora en Colorado tiene COVID y es un momento más peligroso en todo el país y necesitamos tener mucho cuidado en nuestras vidas. Hi, Governor Polis, Sarah Flower from KSUT Four Corners Public Radio. Um, as cases are on the rise, uh, today we are two weeks out from Christmas and like magic, cases here in Southwest Colorado have certainly been on the incline as it is throughout the state. Do you think moving all 64 counties to an orange level in this moment is the right choice? So uh, two things on that. One, we suffered from a major decrease in testing over the uh, New Year's period. It is only now recovered to the level of testing 40, 50,000 plus a day that gives us more visibility. So when we had less testing, we had less reported cases in our state. It did not mean that there were less cases. So it's important to sort of to adjust for the amount of testing that occurs. That being said, we are have been for a period of time at a relative plateau. So while the identified positive test numbers are up, that is a that is a result of more testing, which is a very good thing. We feel better about where testing is now than we did over the holidays, uh, when I think it was a combination of both some testing centers being closed, but also just people's behavior choosing to delay getting tested till after the holiday season. Uh, we, uh, as as a state, have always sought to balance the impact of the coronavirus on people and on families. There's the health impact, the most dramatic impact. People who are hospitalized, people who make it, thankfully, and some who don't. There's an economic impact, and economics is public health. People who can't make rent, who've lost hours, who, uh, who, who've lost their jobs. There's the social and psychological impact, right? Um, how hard it is for people to... Uh, seniors in a senior living center, not to have poker night or movie night, uh, people going to church. All of these are valid, all of them are important. Uh, it's important to balance them. Uh, red is a very restrictive category. And as soon as the hospital capacity uh, uh, showed sufficient room, which it does, down from over 1,600 hospitalizations to just under 900 hospitalizations, um, it took us out of that red alert category uh, and showed that we can have a little bit more of a sustainable way of living in Colorado from a social, emotional, and economic perspective while monitoring the health data in real time every day. Hi, Governor. This is Stephanie Rodriguez with Telemundo Denver. Um, mi pregunta sería, bueno, primero si me puede dar un resumen de lo que se habló en esta conferencia y la, la pregunta es, teniendo en cuenta que los mayores de 70 años pueden no tener acceso a una computadora o simplemente no tengan las habilidades para usar una, um, ¿de qué manera el Estado está facilitando el proceso para estas personas para que ellos puedan recibir la vacuna lo antes posible? Es importante que la gente entienda que para las personas que son mayores de 70, 70 años, los hospitales están contactándolos a sus miembros. Uh, la página es para las personas que no tienen un proveedor. Puede usar las clínicas de salud comunitario, los hospitales um, y, y ver para noticias de clínicos en su barrio. Hi, Governor. This is Molly Jorasek from News Nation on WGN America. A little longer, please. Yeah, uh, my name is Molly. I'm with News Nation on WGN America. Uh, my question is sort of twofold. First, uh, will there ever be a centralized location for the general public to register for future vaccines? And what do you think needs to be done to speed up distribution? So we have different provider partners in different parts of the state in Colorado. There's folks who are served by and live by Centura hospitals or Kaiser members or UC Health. There's independent hospitals in Boulder and Pueblo uh, in Western Colorado. There's so, so we have different providers in different areas and uh, people are part of the, the customer base of those hospitals. So we have worked very closely with the hospitals. I've talked to all the major hospital executives and CEOs on specific numbers, specific sites. In addition to the hospitals, we're working with the community health clinics to serve the medically underserved, uninsured population 
uh, across our state. And then for areas that simply don't have access to hospitals or community health clinics, we're using mobile clinics uh, to help administer the vaccine to people who are age 70 and up. Hey, Governor, just the color of sun. Uh, two questions around vaccines. I think you kind of maybe just answered the one on inequities, but how do you ensure that those folks who aren't in tune, aren't online, don't haven't gone to a hospital, uh, show up at these vaccination sites and know about these places, even with a public health agency providing vaccines, you know, I wonder how many people would actually know where to go and when. And also, can you provide any kind of insight into whether, you know, CVS, Walgreens, Safeway, those kind of locations will be offering vaccines and at what point that might happen in Colorado? Yeah, so uh, we certainly welcome, uh, once we have sufficient quantities of vaccines, broader distribution. Uh, through the traditional pharmacy system, and we're very excited about that. Um, with the limited quantity we have today, we need to be able to get it into the arms of people age 70 and up in, in, a, in a focused way and have, uh, you know, stand-up clinics that can do 500 a day, 1,000 a day, uh, working with uh, providers to do that. Now, most people 70 and up have had some medical contact. Uh, in the last several years. It means that whether it's a community health clinic or a hospital, uh, uh, many have. For those who haven't, and for those that are traditionally medically underserved, we're really going into and partnering with communities to be able to do that. We had great success in Center and San Luis. Uh, Salud is running a clinic in Aurora coming up next weekend for the medically underserved. So for those seniors that aren't or can't get on portals or have their kids or grandkids help them get on portals and sign up, uh, we really want to be in the communities in a way uh, that reaches out and makes sure that they have access from the very get-go to the life-saving vaccine. Uh, the state also will form several specific partnerships each week to really uh, with mobile clinics in underserved areas. Hello, Governor. This is Vinny Galchu, Vice of Bloomberg News in Denver. Three vaccine questions. First, on balancing supply and demand. Uh, might the higher risk elderly not have access uh, as quickly as those um, at a lower risk? In other words, 80 and 90 versus 70. Number two, you're talking about receiving a faster pace of supplies during the Biden administration. How is refrigeration storage and this type of thing availability? And finally, ancillary supplies. What, are, what is the situation with needles and syringes, for example? Thank you, sir. So many questions. I hope I can remember them all. Um, so the good news on refrigeration is Johnson & Johnson vaccine requires no extraordinary measures. Uh, Moderna requires conventional uh, freezers. Uh, really, the, the, uh, the challenge uh, is exclusively around the Pfizer vaccine with the very low temperatures. We're confident that we can uh, distribute and use not just the quantity we have today, but if that quantity were to increase, we could handle several times the quantity of Pfizer vaccine. Not that we expect that. Or the more likely scenario is Johnson & Johnson coming online, which does not have any uh, requirements beyond normal refrigeration and Moderna, uh, normal freezing requirements. So uh, that is that is not a great concern. Uh, we simply uh, allocate the vaccines in a way where we use Pfizer in places that we can use it. So if it's an area that we can store and deploy Pfizer, they would, would get Pfizer so that we have more flexibility with Moderna and hopefully eventually uh, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, the 70 and up group is a large group. Uh, everybody 70 is uh, and up is at, at risk. Um, you're right, it expands literally, literally by, by age and people in their 80s and 90s are at a greater risk than people that are in their 70s. But even somebody in their mid-70s who's perfectly healthy is at a, a three or four hundred times health risk of dying of COVID of somebody in their 20s who's, who's healthy. Uh, in their 80s and 90s, you see rates, uh, fatality rates in excess of 8% among people who contract COVID in 70s, uh, closer to 2% still. Uh, very, very high and much higher than the fraction of a percent for younger people. Um, there is a separate effort around in many ways those that are most at risk in assisted living uh, and nursing homes the average age there is higher they're also potentially a greater risk because of uh, of living together uh, and that is the contract through cvs and walgreens uh, that um, the they will complete the, the first phase of the next few days and really everybody in in both nursing homes and skilled living facilities will receive the vaccine by the end of january The first steps. Next question. Hi, Governor. This is uh, Seth Clayman with the Gazette. 
Um, two questions for you. One, um, do you have an idea of how many vaccines Walgreens has distributed? CVS publishes that data, but Walgreens keeps it a little closer to the, the chest. Um, and second question, um, I, I know you, Dr. Hurley said that the new variant isn't the dominant strain, um, but I wonder if, if uh, the state has an idea of just how prevalent it is yet, um, you know, with the obvious caveat that you're setting up surveillance testing. Thank you. So we will be happy to put that inquiry in for you with Walgreens. Uh, we would hope and expect of them uh, the, the same kind of transparency we have from CVS. Um, these, uh, and it's important that people know this, the, the contracts for the nursing homes and assisted living are the only piece of this that's outside of state management. It's a federal contract being administered by the federal government. Doesn't mean that we're not on them, talking to them. I talked to CVS and Walgreens executives. We'll pass along your information request. Uh, we want the greatest possible degree of transparency. And beyond that, we actually offered to help. We said, you need more people. What do you need to do it quicker? Uh, we, we, we said, let's, let's help because the state has a priority of getting nursing homes and skilled living uh, um, facilities uh, uh, vaccinated and immune as quickly as possible. And we'll work with our federally contracted partners uh, to, uh, to do that. What was your other question? Sorry, I was muted again. Um, the, just, variant, if, the variant? Yeah, just if you have any sort of concept or, or idea of just how prevalent it is in Colorado. Yeah. As of today. So, uh, we, 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 you know, I, I, Dr. Hurley he, um, and others will be happy to, we'll be happy to talk. It is not the dominant strain. It does exist in our state. We expect that community transmission is occurring. Um, what happened in Southwest uh, England is because, and this is what led them to conclude tentatively that it, it, it is more contagious, is it quickly outpaced the other strains because it was a better evolved strain, it spread faster. So over a period of a few months, it became the dominant strain from presumably starting in one individual, which is, 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 is what they believe. Um, somebody who perhaps had long COVID and, and had it sort of co-evolve in their system. So uh, that's what we worry about here. But the same measures um, that we use against any variant of COVID or what we would use here, all variants of COVID are extremely, extremely contagious. That's why we are in the grips of a global pandemic, why it's so critical to wear a mask, why it's so critical not to socialize with people outside of your home and reduce socializations, why it's so critical to try to maintain a distance of six feet whenever possible. Next question. Hello, Hello Governor Vicente Arenas with Fox 31. Uh, one question for you and one question for Dr. Hurley. Uh, Governor, you mentioned that uh, there were about 70,000 vaccines that we were receiving a week. How much more would we need to speed up the vaccinations and are there supply problems? That's my question for you. My question for Dr. Hurley is uh, how will we know if the new COVID variant is impacting the latest infection rates? Thank you both. Uh, we will have Dr. Hurley he get back with you and give you a uh, video answer in the next hour or two. Um, uh, we're having some some technical uh, issues there. Um, we rely entirely on the federal government for the vaccine supply. Uh, we believe that based on what's currently improved, uh, approved and what we've been told, we will be receiving about 70,000 a week, but we are never informed of the exact number uh, more than one week prior to when we get it. So it's entirely in the realm of possibility that there could be disruptions in supply and the federal government might say you're getting 52,000 this week or 58,000 this week. Uh, we have had under delivery, particularly on the Pfizer vaccine uh, at times in the last few weeks. There is, however, also upside. AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, two additional drugs that might be approved in the coming weeks and months. AstraZeneca already approved in the United Kingdom. Johnson & Johnson facing approval uh, potentially as soon as the next few weeks here in the United States. But the other two potential areas for upside are um, CDC guidance that would allow for Moderna dosage to be split, meaning half the dose has shown some, if it shows a great degree of efficacy, would effectively double the amount of doses. Uh, and uh, the potential to release those second near doses that have been held back sitting in federal storerooms and releasing them to the states, which is what uh, the Biden administration has indicated they plan to do in the next few weeks. Final question.
I think we have one more. Dave Perry with the Sentinel in Colorado. Hi, Dave. So in the metro area, there's four or five large medical care systems like UC Health and Kaiser that have large numbers of patients, 70 and older. How's all this vaccine being distributed among these large systems? And, and more importantly, the smaller, more independent medical practices and clinics. Are, are seniors part of the larger systems getting vaccine faster? So uh, everybody can sign up on the sites that we, we gave. Uh, we mentioned that Salud is doing a, a clinic for medically underserved residents of Aurora. They plan to vaccinate 800 in the next few days. Um, but uh, many, many seniors have interacted with the conventional healthcare system, meaning they need some sort of uh, hospital care 